Hey guys, Mr. Burns here again, fresh off your grad speech. Uh, hopefully none of you guys are too mad at me. Um, but I'm going to give you a little video anyway on uh, maximum and minimums of quadratics. So when you guys hear the word uh, max slash mins in correspondence with quadratics, you should be thinking vertex. So you're either thinking uh, a reflection right here. So this is REF. Yes. There's a, is there a reflection? Yes, there is. In which case, you have a max. And that right there, that guy right there is your vertex. If you have sort of your standard position and your REF is no, um, then you have a minimum. And here again, that's your vertex. So the key is when you're doing these problems, it's to find your vertex. And how do you do that? Well, there's two ways. The first way that we learned was called completing the square. And if you remember, completing the square, you use the formula C is equal to B over 2 squared. So we also did this for the equations of circles because the, in the equations of circles you had to complete the square uh, from general to standard form of a circle you have to complete the square twice so you use this guy and all you would do is find the value of C that makes the quadratic a perfect square and the second way we did which was lovely we called it the alternate method we used x is equal to negative b over 2a and this guy I told you before your midterm exam if you don't know the axis of symmetry you might as well kiss 20 percent of your exam goodbye uh, it was a common exam and you know being that we only had basically uh, quadratics and rate of change done this guy was a huge part of it so uh, this is a thing of beauty what that what the axis of symmetry gives us is the x coordinate of the vertex so if we have a vertex here and let's just call it negative 2 5 uh, this negative 2 is equal to negative b over 2a that is my axis of symmetry so my axis of symmetry will be x is equal to negative 2 which is also equal to negative b over 2a so if we have this and we can find the other uh, coordinate of the vertex the y coordinate simply by plugging this guy back into our given general form of the quadratic another thing to recognize is that if we're trying to find transformational form of a quadratic all you need is HT VT VS and REF well HT and VT this is your vertex this is your vertex we can get from the axis of symmetry what we just learned your VS that's your a value and this guy you can tell if there's a negative if the a value has a negative in front of it so if it's negative 2 x squared then it's a VS of 2 a reflection yes so that's something I discussed in another video but this is really the how we do it alright axis of symmetry um, I won't complete the square in this video. If you want to know how to do that, there's another video for it. It's called Completing the Square, Finding Transformational Form of Quadratic. All right, let's have a look at a couple of situations where you might use this guy. Uh, baseball is hit and fo follows a parabolic path described by the function h of t is equal to negative 3t squared plus 12t plus 1. So you look at this guy, the vs is 3, and there's a reflection, so it's opening down frown face. Uh, where t is time in seconds and after the ball is hit, h of t is the height of the ball above the ground in meters. So t is time, h of t, that's the height. Algebraically determine the maximum height reached by the ball and the time it takes to reach the maximum height. So we always love to think of things in terms of x and y. And sometimes when x and y aren't there, like in this case, it messes us up completely. Well, remember that the gent regular form of your quadratic looks like this. So 
ax squared plus bx plus c, which means the regular form of our axis of symmetry is simply x is equal to negative b over 2a. Well, in this case, we don't have the, uh, the same variables. We have t and h of t. So our vertex for this guy would just be x, y. But our um, what we have with this, h of t is equal to a t squared plus b t plus c, where now our axis of symmetry is t is equal to negative b over 2a. So what finding the axis of symmetry does in this is determine the time it takes the ball to reach the maximum height. So the point at which the ball reaches the maximum height. And then in order to determine the maximum height, we have to find h of t, or y, by subbing t back into our formula. So let's do that. Let's find uh, the maximum height. So if you look here, um, let me see. I have t is equal to negative b over 2a. Now, negative 12 over 2 times negative 3. So the time, so negative 12 divided by negative 6 is going to be 2. Good check to see if you did this correctly. Is it positive? If not, then you're in trouble. Time is always positive. Um, so now what we need to do is figure out exactly uh, the maximum height. So h of t. So h of 2 is what we're finding. So we're going to put in t is equal to 2. And then we have negative 3 times 2 squared plus 12 times 2 plus 1. So don't forget bed mass. We do just bonus first, so we, and we don't go negative three times two, then square. We go two squared, which is four. So we got negative twelve plus twenty-four plus one. Or we're gonna have when we do the math on this guy, we get thirteen, and that's meters. So we found that time, uh, the maximum occurs is two seconds. At what height? Well, it occurs at 13 meters. So the maximum height is 13. Now you could have said this question in a totally different way. What is the vertex of this function? Well, it is 213. That's the vertex. They just mean something in this case. It means the time in which the maximum occurs, and the actual maximum is the y coordinate or the h t coordinate. All right, let's try one more. Now this is this one's uh, this one's a good question, a typical public exam question. This one's also a typical public exam question, which is a little bit harder, um, but we still have to use the axis of symmetry. So a daycare bought a 20 meter or 20 meters of board to form two sides of a rectangle. So you see, here's one and here's two. So if all 20 meters of board are, is to be used, write a quadratic function that models the area of the sandbox and use it to determine the maximum area the sandbox can have. So what I might do if I was doing this question is label these sides so you can call it x, y. I usually, when I'm doing these questions, I like to call it width and length, just to keep it simple. So I know that altogether w plus l is equal to 20. So that's really my first equation. w plus l is equal to 20. Now, I could also say that the area of this guy... It's a rectangle, so area is equal to width times the length. So I'm looking for a quadratic that models the area. So i got to sub something in here. Well, I'm going to solve this guy for L. So I'm going to have 20... Uh, sorry, I won't write it like that. All I'm going to do is take this... Uh, w across the other side. So I have L is equal to 20 minus W. So then what I'm going to do is take this guy and sub it right in here. So generally when we're doing these max min problems that are of this type, we need two equations. One in terms of the perimeter, one's in term, terms of the area. So the perimeter is 20, you add together the two sides to get it. If there's more than two sides, perhaps it's a tennis court like the problems we've had, then you might have, you know, one big L and a bunch of W's or something like that, depending on what the situation is. 
So now my area is equal to uh, w times 20 minus w. Now I'm just going to use uh, distri uh, distribution. So I'm going to actually switch it up a bit and just rearrange it. W squared plus 20w. Just to make sure I get the squared in front there. So that's the area. So there's my function in terms of my area. So quadratic function that models the area of the sandbox. So that might be worth 2. Now I got to find, determine the maximum area. So in order to determine the maximum area, I basically have to find the vertex of this guy. You see it has a reflection, which is good because it's going to have a maximum. If there wasn't a negative here, then we'd have a minimum, which wouldn't make sense. A minimum area of a sandbox would be zero, so that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, so uh, let's find the maximum of this guy. So again, we use the axis of symmetry. Now we don't have x squared here, we have w, so it will be width is equal to um, negative b over 2a and negative b is negative 20 over 2 times negative 1. My width magically is 10 meters. Now I got a couple of options at this point. I could sub it back in here and just find my area or I could look at this and say I want to find my length as well. What What's my maximum length here? So L is going to be equal to 20, just from this formula. 20 minus 10, which is going to be 10 meters. So actually, my width and my length are the same. Usually that's going to be the case, because usually a square is going to give you a maximum area. Um, or usually, probably always. I don't know if I want to commit to that, but usually that's the case. So my max area given my max dimensions, 10 times 10, which is going to be 100 meters squared. Now you could have easily have found it just by using your formula. Area is equal to negative 10 squared. Plus 20 times 10. So you got negative 100 plus 200, which equals 100 meters, which is the same thing as we have here, squared. So uh, either way, you get the right answer. So this is a typical max-min problem. This is really the key, guys. you got to be able to get these first couple of steps and then work it out. So uh, hopefully it makes sense. I've given you lots of examples in your notes of these stuff. So go back, look at some old publics. Good luck with your studying, guys. I'll see you in class.